Hello. Hello. Who is this? You tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. <laughs> I don't think so. What's that noise? Popcorn. You making popcorn? Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? I'll do some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh huh. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? Because I want to know who I'm looking at. is playing a deadly game. It all began with a scream over 911. Someone who's seen one too many scary movies. Now, he's taken his love of fear. Hello? Hello, Sydney. One step too far. Do you like scary movies? What's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs and she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a scary movie. Number one, you can never have sex. Hey, what are you doing with this me? Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. Let's get another beer, you want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. He didn't make the rules. The police are always on track, but they watch prom night and save time. He just kills by them. Don't answer the phone. Don't open the door. Don't try to hide. Everybody's a suspect! Yeah. Not scary, are you? Squeak. So, so welcome, um, cats and kittens, boys and girls. This is a new episode of Let's Watch It Again, our movie review podcast where we break down ours and maybe your favorite movies. Um, so today we're going to cover um, the 1996 film Scream. It's uh, 25th anniversary. And today I have a uh, first timer, first timer. Mm-hmm, this yep. is like, because you, you have the Orioles hat on, so I'm going to treat it like, like it's baseball related, right? Okay. It's like getting your first hit. Yeah. Yeah. You get that ball after you're done. Okay. We have Liv Utsler on the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for having me. Um, This is a different perspective for me. So definitely my first time. So I'm excited. So wait until you listen to it after we're done. You're okay, like, I'm I excited about voice. that. I mean, I'm always like that when I hear my voice on like a voicemail. I'm like, oh God, please just delete it. Don't let me hear it. It's but like, uh, it's like, no, I'm excited. Maybe we'll change your voice with that voice box that they had in the movie. Yeah, you should do that. <laughs> you should. That would be a good touch. Um, so I want to run down the synopsis. We're going to talk about a little trivia, some some factoids about the movie, and okay. then we'll get into our favorite scenes. Let's go. All right, and because you've seen this, how many times do you think you've seen this? In my life, I don't know, probably 20 times. So that's more than any movie I've seen. Okay. I've, the most times I've seen any movie has been like 10 yes. times. But no, I haven't watched like it fully <laughs> through 20 times because, you know, I'll have it on background or if somebody wants yeah. to watch it. I'll just pull it up and watch it. So, yep. So a year after the murder of her mother, a teenage girl is terrorized by a new, by a new killer who targets the girl and her friends using horror movies, horror films rather, as a part of a deadly game. Scream. So how close is that to what we watched? I think it's pretty close. I don't don't have any complaints about that. I feel like, yeah, it's a pretty good synopsis. First little synopsis. Sometimes people will have like, yeah, so this happened and then this other thing happened and don't forget the mask. See me, I'm pretty like cut and dry. I'm like, that's enough detail. That sounds good. (laughs) Um, Henry Winkler's in it. <laughs> the fucking Fonz is in it. You just want to do that. Oh. So the movie was released December 20th, 1996. So this okay. was a Christmas release. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the budget. So this was a, so this was a West Craven flick. Right. And um, so he, he had this weird period where he's coming out of like Freddy. So you yeah. had like, oh, yeah. I think like the new nightmare, maybe a year and a half or so before okay, when right. Freddie comes out and he's actually terrorizing a film production. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of some questions of what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? You've been you know attached to this franchise for so long, right? Or this character for so long. So this movie had a budget of 15 million. See, I did not know the budget, but <laughs> holy fuck. Now, 15 million in 96, that might be 30, might be yeah. about 40 in, in today's dollars. And in it, 
the, you had maybe a few people who were trying to transition, namely Courtney Cox. They were trying; she was yeah. trying to transition from being this nice character from Friends into exactly. kind of a bitch yeah. for, for this. Yeah. And um, Nev Campbell, who's on a television mm. show, she's on Party of Five, and trying to take that that next jump. And you see it to not as effective with um, fuck is her name uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes. Okay. That's her name, right? Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I know I what was, you did last yeah. summer. Yep. Yep. Um, so in the United States, the movie made a hundred and three million dollars, and um, other territories, so outside seventy. So this is almost a two hundred million dollar movie. Yeah. Um, it's box office the um, the release year, so it ranked fifteenth in the year. Okay. Um, and all time, it's still ranked really high all time. Like, you know, think about how many, like, uh, superhero movies and all have kind of changed yeah. these numbers. It's in the top 500 in all time, like, sales. Okay. And so it's up there. Um, so the film opened in 1,400 theaters. Um, it had an opening weekend of just over six million. So it made, you know, almost half of its production back in that weekend. Right. And it opened second behind an MTV movie. This is a very MTV weekend. MTV. It opened second behind a TV? An MTV movie. Oh, my God. It's a property related to MTV. It's animated. Can you think what it is? Oh, my God. No, I don't. And Okay, so what is the same year? So, 96? Uh-huh. uh-huh. And it's animated? Yeah. MTV related. This might be too young for you because you're like 12. <laughs> Shut up. Beavis and Butthead do I- America. Okay, I promise you I was going to say Beavis and Butthead, and then my mind doubted me. I was going to say, no, that's too easy. Uh, so, now, I think at a certain point, movies were released twice. So, you had that initial run, and then it's like, oh, we might better make some more money off of this. Let's re-release it. So, okay. in this initial run, um, so the numbers I mentioned all um, earlier were the all-time numbers. So, when they did that re-release, so what have you, right. that 173. Um, and it's um, initial release... It was $87 million. So when it first came out, initial release. And we only do initial releases now. Yeah, we do. Um, it was re-released in April 11, 1997. And it got like an additional, and this is only U.S. numbers, an additional $16 milli. So that brings us to that 103 here. Um, the total domestic, as I said before, um, Screen remains the most successful of the franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, receiving largely uh, positive critical acclaim, Scream 2 generated just $1 million less than the first Scream. Mm. So it was one seventy two. Okay, I mean, that's not bad. It's not bad for like a a, a second one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. And it wasn't a flop either. No. I don't feel like. I feel like that was a good one. Um. So let's see. So one million dollars less on the second one, and it was a uh, let's see the Scream three. So it's starting to have a little bit of a downtrend. So right. Scream three made eleven million dollars less than the first Scream. Oh yeah, I can see that. Now it's gonna get. I don't even. It's the not Scream gonna be good. Four. It's not gonna be good. You're not going to like this. I saw. If I, is that the one with, was it Emma Roberts? In yes. One? I saw it in theaters. I it was so pissed. It made 75 million less than oh. the first screen. Okay. So it was like Ooh. 90 something. Flop. Um, as of 2013, um, Scream is currently the 577th highest grossing movie worldwide. So it's actually gone down a little bit from that initial number. In the U.S., without adjusted um, adjustments for inflation, it's the 12th highest grossing horror movie and remained the highest grossing slasher until it was surpassed by Halloween in 2018. So that, that kind of loose remake, mm. um, which I liked, actually. Um, directly followed by Scream 2, Scream 3, and Just Inflation, the movie would have doubled as far as, like, if you look at in 2021 dollars, right. that would be $348, $46 million wow. Scream would have made. Uh, so let's ahead, see. Scream. Despite competition at the box office, that <laughs> this is this is great. So the other summer, I mean, the other Christmas-oriented movies that were out around that time, one is a huge one. Christmas movie. Uh-huh. Tom Cruise. No, it's... If you don't get it right, you're going to have to do the thing that <laughs> what is the, that Cooper Gooden Jr. does. No, I'm going to... I know I'm going to get it wrong. What? Shoot it. Do it. Let's do it. What's... Uh, um, help me help you I, live. I'm like literally it's in my brain. It's in my brain. Show me the money, live. <laughs> now I'm just... Fucking, Jerry Maguire. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nope. Was not... Definitely was not going to say I was that. literally just running lines at a point. No, um, I definitely was going to say... Nothing with Mission Tom Impossible. Cruise. I I was gonna say Mission Impossible. So in addition to that, it was uh, Mars uh, Mars Attacks, which okay. uh, was a Tim Burton movie. It didn't do well. They labeled it um, 
So during the, re- the release initially, they labeled um, because of it being released against Jerry Maguire and Mars Attack, people expected Mars Attack to do really well because um, the previous kind of uh, similar release of an alien related movie, Independence Day and Mission Impossible previously, oh, well, these movies that are coming out yeah. are going to be bankable. So Scream is going to be, as they described, DOA, Dead on Arrival. And, and uh, it, they were wrong about that. They were wrong. Um, so, and the last note on that, the movie was shown um, up to eight months at this initial release. So there you go. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> so I'm going to hit the hit this last synopsis. It kind of fill in a little bit of gaps. Okay. A year of their mother's death, Sydney Prescott. So now they add in Sydney Prescott. Sydney Prescott. Uh, yes. Nev Campbell and her friends uh, started experiencing some strange phone calls. See, that's left out mm. of the initial one because because phones are important. They are, yeah. Um, in, in this movie, yes. <laughs> pagers, just like stab, stab, stab. I was like, "What's this on my pager?" I know. <laughs> just, <laughs> like, who is fucking? Like, I'm getting murdered. Uh, they later learned that the calls were coming from a crazed serial killer, a uh, white face mask, and a large black robe, um, mm-hmm. looking for his revenge. Um, the, his phone calls are consistently and consistently asked many questions. Uh, the one main being, "What's your favorite scary movie?" Which yep. is a thing, right? Yeah. Uh, along with much scary movie trivia, ending with bloody pieces of um, and it's innocent lies scattered around the town of Woodsboro. That's a little bit fuller, I think. I think it is. I mean, it's a little more descriptive. Yeah, because you 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 definitely because the math was iconic. Um, the you know, what's your favorite scary yeah. movie was and even, uh, even the town, even yeah. the town. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Pretty like, you know, like, you know, that town. Thugs Barrel. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Woods Barrel. Woods, Woods Barrel. Barrel. Not uh, Thugs Barrel. Thugs Barrel will be a different thing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so what do you want to rock first? Do you want to go with the trivia first or do you want to start? Mm. Um, cause, um, I have observations on the spot. Okay. Let's, let's start with the trivia because I feel yeah. like I'm absolutely terrible at trivia and I just want to see how I do. Okay. I want to see if I'm going to slaughter it. I want to just I want to just go for it. Yeah, I mean, th- pretty much this this is uh, the equivalent of the Verwatchables half ass internet research. I get okay. on I get online. I'm like, all right, what's interesting here? Shoot, I'm like I'm up for any challenge. Let's see how I do. It's not much of a challenge. It's more like just data dump. Um, all right, let's let's do it. The party scene near the end um, of the film runs for uh, 42 minutes long. So that, that that last like third act. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm thinking in my head. This is a I'm big like, chunk of the movie. <laughs> if if I'm remembering, yes, that is just a very long part of the movie. So it was shot over the course of 21 days, um, from the time um, from the time the sun set um, to the time the, the the it rose. Which after it wrapped, uh, t- the crew had T-shirts that said "I survived the 118," <laughs> uh, which was the name of the scene during the shoot. <laughs> That's kind of fire, though. That's kind of fire. And the cast and crew jokingly call it the longest night in horror history. Ooh, that is long. So you said 21 days? days to shoot that to 42 shoot that? minutes, yeah. Holy <laughs> and I mean, if you think about it, 21 days is the better part of a month, right? Yes. And just imagine if it was like, we're changing seasons. Like, yo, what the fuck? What are we doing? Yeah, like, what? I, I couldn't survive that. We were delayed. That shit. <laughs> Someone's Come coke problem popped days, up. 21 days, yes. Someone blew an ACL. Uh, at the 12-minute mark, um, at the beginning of the movie, when Casey, which people don't remember, that's her name, uh, wow. Drew Barrymore's character. Yeah, um, I, I just know I'm always like Drew. Drew. So you'll like this, I think. Um, so Drew Barrymore's characters, her parents come home, and they find something wrong. Her father tells uh, her mother to go to the McKenzie's, which is the same thing Laurie, Jamie Lee Curtis, told Lindsay, Kyle Richards, and Tommy, Brian Andrews, in, Holly, uh, in Halloween in 1978. So the, mu- the movie contains that same reference. Go to the McKenzie's. Get out of here. <laughs> Jamie Kennedy was chosen for the role of Randy because he could often um, improvise humor into his lines, and which made Wes Craven laugh. The director was like, okay, that's funny. Keep, that, yeah. keep it in. Um, the, the use of caller ID, <laughs> that's yes, why phones are caller important. ID. It increased threefold at the release of this movie. Wow. It's like, who the fuck is calling me? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> me, me saying <laughs> deny. Yeah, what the fuck do you do before caller ID? You just yeah, pick up and like, who is? You just put your hand yeah. over the fucking and mouth. And let them talk first, yeah. Yeah, so this is Bill Clinton. Like, like. <laughs> Bye, yep. Nora Production, uh, Ghostface's signature black robe was going to be a different color. Ooh, what color was it going to be? White. 
That would have ruined. I feel like that would have ruined the whole movie. And they said it would make him appear more like a ghost. The change, um, th- this was change in fear. People were compared to costume to Ku Klux Klan wear. Yeah, definitely could see that. Um, <laughs> Just the Grand Wizard scream at the Grand yeah, Wizard. <laughs> that I feel like that movie. If they were to wear a white robe, it would have been like a whole different outcome. It's like you're gonna get shot. This robe is gonna be red yeah. now. And two, I'm like, I'm gonna be more scared if you're dressed in all black. Co- trying to come into my house and kill me because the the white faces i remember so one halloween mask that i would wear and i wanted the the screen mask or the ghost face mask um i would wear the jason mask all the time okay and it lent itself to being glow in the dark so yes the glow in the dark yeah so imagine someone just in that full black and you just see like a glow in the dark the face just come out of the shadows yes. it's like I'm, I'm gonna fucking die yeah same with same with the scream like you see this this random mask yeah. it's not gonna be the same if he's wearing a white robe yeah okay sure i'm gonna be like you know what i'm not even scared of you so he has the same birthday as I do so I'm going to give him love and respect Skeet Ulrich who was cast as Billy Loomis excuse me Skeet Skeet Uh that's his name that is his name a moment of silence I'm going to throw my observation in there now because you're a child and you couldn't let that go I was like I wanted him to be more famous so a magazine could read Skeet 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 does it again or something like that but no no one would do it release it it now yeah release it release it now it's Um, not too late so Skeet was, he was cast as Billy Loomis partly because of his resemblance to Johnny Depp, whose signature mm-hmm. role was Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. Okay. And he, he it, dies. Fuck him. Stay. I guess. It, they're trying to do the hair thing. Some, I, that's the only thing. The little hair, the little strand of hair, all sweaty. And yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a trait for, for actors. Can you sweat good? Can you sweat good? That's all that matters. You don't even have to be a good actor. Wow. Well. <laughs> a very specific thing you just said there. Uh, Courtney Cox was approached um, production, in production to pursue the role um, that she had of uh, Gail. And uh, the ro- uh, she was interested in playing the bitch character to offset the nice friends image. And the mm-hmm. image of the, is the main reason producers um, initially refused to consider Cox for the part. I'm saying, uh, she's, she's a nice person. So she took that part to kind of dispel it. And she played... She, was she in the fourth one? Or she... Died, or? I... Oh, that's a good question. She might have been in a fourth I feel one. like she might have made an appearance, but I can't like say 100%, but I feel like I she think was she died like, in the fourth one. I really believe she she was in the fourth one because yeah. it was they made like a big deal about this. Yes, yeah, um, wasn't good. And obviously disappointed every single person. Originally, you're going to like this. Okay. The title of this movie was called Scary Movie. That's great, right? Yes, because <laughs> which was later, <laughs> which was later the name of a parody film. Yeah, other pop culture um, horror movies and uh, hold on, let's, let me re- reread that. Uh, the other pop culture horror films in the scary movie franchise. Um, the term scary movie is mentioned five times in this. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like, yeah, if they would have just took clips from it and just played it in a Hell trailer yeah. for scary movies, like, all right, well, that would have been fire. Yeah. No, I'm a big scary movie fan too so so how how are you on 80s movies 80s probably not my strong suit like, like if you throw some out i might be like oh, i know that one i've heard of that uh-huh. one but probably not like super knowledgeable like i said aaron Rodgers. yeah yeah uh-huh. i'm not yeah not super knowledgeable 12. with the 80s yeah 12 years um <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, being a, fa- uh, a favorite of uh, screenwriter kevin williamson molly ringwald uh was offered the her. role of sydney prescott but turned it down, um, saying God. that she would she rather not be playing a high school uh, student at the age she was twenty seven at the time when he offered yes, the role. Yes, girl, why would you? Um, Rose McGowan dyed her hair blonde mm-hmm. for the role of Tatum in order to contrast her naturally brown hair from that of Nev Campbell's. Ooh, yeah. okay. Well, I'm, I want to say I am happy Molly Ringwald was not in the film. Wow. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't have anything against her, but I just feel like she wouldn't have been it Six, wouldn't have been the same. Sixteen candles of death. See? Boom. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, She'll be good on that one. The film was um so MPAA, right? Yeah. The film was sent to MPAA over nine times for reconsideration as they were going to slap an N C seventeen rating on the film. Each time the MPAA uh, made Wes Craven cut out more of the film's gory, heavy, uh, gore heavy shots, Bob Weinstein eventually had to step in and secure the film's R rating. Um, Wes Craven wanted to know what Bob uh, Weinstein had uh, said to the MPAA to make it happen. 
to give them that R rating, he told the film was a comedy and not a horror film, and it completely changed their viewpoint. It's like, nah, Are it's comedy. For real? That's what changed the rating, uh-huh. is him just saying it's a comedy. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes with the MPA, I've learned, like, because we, we covered this in Street Fighter, um, it was one scene in it where they in, they added something back in it to make the movie PG-13. So it was a fair amount of violence in there, and they cut out a lot of stuff. They just were just cutting. Okay. And it, it went from being a rated R to being PG. And it's like, all How right, this is trash. How much do they have to cut? Because, I mean, you would have to cut quite a... I think they just trimmed down certain elements of the fight scenes because the fight choreography looked a little choppy. Okay. So there's one part when Van Damme is, um, well, sorry, Guile, is rappelling down. He's like, uh, four years of ROTC for this shit? That's what brought it back up to what they would need for a PG-13 rating. The MPAA is persnickety. They need younger people in it, like me. Yeah, um, I mean, because I have never, I didn't know that. I did not know that. Have you seen Sex and the City before? I've I'm not the, a fan the movie. of Sex and the The movie, no, I haven't seen. I've seen episodes of Sex and the City. I have not seen the movie. So, there, the, I think it was the first movie. It was a movie that came out called The Hammer. And I always rally against this. Um, it was a movie that came out called The Hammer, which was an Adam Carolla movie about kind of semi-autobiographical, what have you. And um, it, it's a scene in it. The movie is supposed to be PG-13. And it's a scene in it where he like hits his hand and with a hammer. He's like, Fuck! And that gave it an R rating, where One there's word. literally full frontal dick nudity and. Okay, see that's what I don't understand. Movie, yeah, yeah. Because some movies will be like PG thirteen, mm-hmm. and I'm like, hold on, but there's some saucy scenes in some of these. <laughs> saucy, or you've seen? Um, I think it was what maybe the Ring two. The ring, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've seen the ring. When she's in the well and she's like, Mommy, she's like, I'm not your fucking mommy. Yeah, and oh yeah. She, PG-13, though. No. She like bitched her so hard. She was <laughs> like, yeah, you're going to stay in that well. <laughs> that's, that's a life that I'm going to live. <laughs> uh, Drew Barrymore's uh, scenes were all shot in the first five days of production. At around the 13-minute mark at the beginning of the film, Billy Eski, um, Ulrich, uh, climbs into Sydney's uh, bedroom, uh, startling her much like Glenn did to Nancy in Nightmare on Elm Street. So it's like, it's like they're really going for that. Oh, yeah. Um, in the U.S., without inflation, it, the film was the 20th, um, 20th highest grossing horror film, and it remains the highest grossing of the slasher genre. And number two and three happen to be Scream 2 and 3. So that, it's like go. that top three. Let's get just, these slashes out just there. Just a successful, uh, I guess, franchise. or Because, yeah, Scream. Uh-huh. Scream, yeah. I love Scream. So this is, this was at one point quoted as Rose McGowan's favorite filming experience of her career. Wow, okay. As revealed, as revealed in the directors in 1997, um, so hold on, as revealed in the directors in 2007, Wes Craven originally turned down the movie because it was too violent, but reconsidered making um, a more gory film for hungry fans who continually told him that his best movie was The Hills Have Eyes from 1977. You've seen the remake, no? I've seen the remake, yeah. The original was rough. I have not fully watched the original. I watched bits and pieces. Quite frankly, it was a little hard to make it through. Um, But I've watched the remake. And, I mean... It's fine. It's okay. I mean, Flex is in it, right? It's something to watch. (laughs) Not to, like, shit. I'm not shit. (laughs) Noted horror purist (laughs) live over here. It's like, "Eh, it's just... It's not for me. I don't know. I don't know. Some of you Philistines and your taste... It's it's something to watch. It's common to horror, and yeah, it is. It's like wow, <laughs> wow. It's, it's like that thing. I don't know if you watched. It was this like long four hour horror documentary also on uh, Shutter, and I have not. I just made fun. Don't be one of those because okay. I will make fun of you. I was okay, like, what there's is it? a what? lot of thin haired white people on here. Like every person okay. in horror has the thinnest fucking oh. oniony hair. Yeah. Like, think of Greg Nicotero. His shit is oniony. So it was one guy that was Oops. talking about, I forget what movie it was, but um, I think it was Maniac, Maniac, the original from like 1980. Okay. And they did a remake that had uh, Elijah Wood in it. So as, as the, the, <gasps> the killer. Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. I know exactly. So he's yep. scalping people and shit like that. Yes. And I just remember the guy who made some really violent movie. They panned in on him. He's like, huh, Maniac. A little strong for my taste. It was so fucking See, funny. I'm not, okay, I'm not that type of person. I am not like, yeah, no. Don't put me in that category, okay? Mm, if you let your, you mean if your hair keeps growing out and it starts looking <laughs> oniony, I don't know what to tell you. 
If that happens, you just shave my, all my hair off, okay? Scalp me. Because I will not walk around with onion grass for hair. Yeah, like, the, like what is up with your hide? Like, just cut it off. <laughs> All right. Uh, the killer's um, phone calls were done by Roger Jackson on set with a cell phone. At one point, the crew were contacted by the police, demanding to know who they were because they thought the serial killer was making was making real calls. Oh my god! Why can't Phoenix turn down the role of Billy Loomis? I, I've heard this before. I've heard that he had turned it down. Yeah. Um, when the principal, Henry Winkler, uh, turns and scares himself in the mirror at, an empty, at the empty door, he begins to fix his hair like he did in Happy Days. Okay. <laughs> I like how He's they like, throw yeah, all these little, <laughs> they stick with these, all these little, um, what is it? What do you call it? Like Easter eggs? Yeah, yeah. Yep, I like that about it. Um, although the killer's costume is referred to as Ghostface, the um, costume is actually called, I, I want to know if you're going to get this one. It has something to do with, it's a type of parent, and it's what happens to, is what he brings to Woodsboro. Okay, I oh see the thing is I've always called his alf just the scream, just scream. Father face. death is what they called him. <laughs> okay, now when did this come about? When because I have never heard that. Oh, this is this is like in production. Okay, like, this is what. Okay, that's the father like, death costume right there. <laughs> just scream face, yeah. You know that's that's the green face. <laughs> um. So uh, Dewey um, brings a brings yes, a costume la- <laughs> brings the costume. So when they bring that there, it's labeled on the in, at the police station. It's labeled father father death. Uh, director of photography uh, Mark Irwin was fired a week before a shooting um, was to end. The director Wes Craven, um, upon reviewing dailies, found that the footage was out of focus. He was tight. Oh my god! And I would be no. And he was ordered to fire and replace the entire camera crew. And Erwin was like, well, if you fire them, you got to fire me. And he was like, well, I'm all you got. Bye. Like, Eat a dick. Get out of here. Um, Bob Weinstein initially approached. Now, this is, I want your take on this. Okay. So, um, initially approached Robert Rodriguez, Danny Boyle, George A. Romero, Sam Raimi to direct this movie. Okay. Do you feel that any of them could have done, because you, you obviously like this movie, mm-hmm. any of them, okay. Which one would you have, if you couldn't get Wes Craven, which one of that group would you have preferred? And do you think it would have been as well received? So honestly, I'm going to be honest. I'm not good with, I of course know Wes Craven. Like I know that I am terrible at like remembering names. I can help you with this. Yeah. Help me with those. If I see a face, I automatically, okay, that's that person. Mm -hmm. Names. Uh, Robert Rodriguez from Dust to Dawn. Oh, uh, Danny Boyle, 28 Days Later. Okay. George A. Romero, I think he just did like a lot of classic zombie stuff. Mm. And um, Sam Raimi, um, all of the, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, Evil Dead. Hold on. No, wait a second. I Drag You to Hell. That's it. I that's Drag Sam You Raimi. to Hell? Yeah. Okay. Oh, fuck. That's rough, isn't it? That's a, that's a that tough one. That is rough. I feel, like, I feel like you would need two of them. Okay. I just feel like you need a good mix. Now, now, this would be 96 of them, though. That's the other thing, too. Oh, true. Okay, 96. Because oh. Robert Rodriguez had, um, from Dust to Dawn, Dust came out in 96. Dawn. Yeah. Love, I, me and my dad would always watch that yeah. movie together. Um, I don't know, because I don't, I feel like you would at least need not just one of them, two to recreate it. Because I feel like it was just, like, such, so well done, mm-hmm. especially for, like, its time. It was, like, fresh and new. Mm-hmm. I feel like you need two of them at least. And I can't pick two because honestly, I'm like that lineup. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Robert um, Rodriguez to the dentist, uh, did, a, did a decent job. It, it'd be a different movie. Um, that's he, the thing. It would be a to- like depending on who you pick from that lineup mm-hmm. from those directors or I just feel like it would be a completely different movie. I think with Sam Raimi, it would have been a wetter movie because he, he, he likes pus and weird, yeah. gross Shit. Definitely would have not been the same. So thing. Kevin Kevin Williamson said they they didn't get it, and he had concerns having them read the script. It's like, oh, they believed it was purely a comedy, and uh, that's they truly believed that yeah. it was a comedy. Ironically, though, uh, Rod- Rodriguez would direct the footage for the fictional in-universe film Stab. So the one oh, that he, Stab? So he, he did those. So Robert Rodriguez did those. So he's probably your guy, actually. Oh. God. Okay. Well, then that's my guy. Come right there. through. I take him. Come through, Robert. Yes. Uh, and the same as Robert. So he gets there. You it. go, Robert. Come through. Um, David Arquette and Matthew Little were initially considered for the role of Billy Loomis mm-hmm. before uh, being cast um, as Dewey Riley. That's a bad name. And, I know. And Stu 
Mocker, which is a worse name. Okay, Stu, I always, I'm like, why is this man's name Stu? Uh, also, um, Arquette was considered for Stu as well. So they okay. were just like, which one of these dudes are we going to put in these just roles? Just like, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> which one can you do the Johnny Depp hair? Make it happen. <laughs> and then fucking Skeet came in and was like, look at my hair. He has, has plugs like, in. Not <laughs> he hair just, plugs. It's like, ah, yeah. So it's what like, is it? Like Rogaine? <laughs> yeah, the wild Rogaine. Yeah, the Call Malone special going on. <laughs> yes. Uh, Nev Campbell was originally going to say no to the film, especially she's mm. afraid of uh, scary movies. And... Um, she also um, heard that her co-star Skeet, Oldridge, who was in the craft with her, yes. was like, he's going to do it. So she's like, All right, I'll be in it then. If Skeet's going to be there, well, I'll be there. Good thing for Skeet because I think I think she was a perfect fit. I just love her. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm going to skip over that because I don't care about that. Melissa Joan Hart, Brittany Murphy, Alicia Witt, Melanie Linsky, and Melinda Clark all auditioned for uh, Sydney Prescott. Brittany Murphy? Yeah. Melissa Joan Hart is interesting. Sabrina. Yeah, Jimmy I was going to say Sabrina. Maybe she was trying to go kind of a similar direction yeah, to trying was. to get out of that like Nickelodeon <laughs> poppy, like innocent yeah. role and go how like kind of like um, how Courtney Cox did. Yeah. Like she, maybe she was trying to just navigate a different direction. But totally. I could, definitely couldn't see that for her. Um, so the Weinsteins wanted the movie to be filmed in Vancouver and, um, so British Columbia mm -hmm. and it would save them like a million dollars if they filmed in British Columbia and Wes Craven's like, absolutely not. Fuck that. I want to Wes Craven said, fuck no, we're going to spend that extra million, a hundred million, two hundred, however million I'm going to make this film. Um, so Drew Barrymore's, uh, thing in the beginning, right? Um, yes. like how she was crying and all mm -hmm. this. Do you know how they got her to cry? <laughs> she's, she's an animal lover, by the way. I know. I Drew is just the sweetest human. I act like I know her, wow. but she is so sweet. <sighs> I might Did be they... Wes Craven. <laughs> he Why? would play like animal abuse footage. Oh, oh <laughs> my! <laughs> it's like I need this from you. Look at this hold dog getting punted. On. What is going on? Someone on just set? like dropped a cat. <laughs> he played animal abuse footage. It's a villain. I mean, How many take? Well, you said she got her takes done. That yeah. take done pretty fast, right? Yeah. Because I mean, like, she's the first. I mean, give or take. What was it? Like ten minutes? Mm -hmm. Like twelve minutes. Yeah. Twelve minutes. How many times did it take her to do her scene? Because she's a great actress. It mm -hmm. couldn't have taken her long. And I mean, she's been acting for forever yes, too. For a long point. time. Um, That's fucking terrible. I mean, look. But this podcast. Look, <laughs> look at this footage. She's like, look. <laughs> You well, want me crying as poor pockets? thing. Jeez, uh, oh, I did not know. See, these are I like learning these things. So I did not even know. One, they had to like find something to make her cry. Uh, but two, that it was that extreme. Uh, Reese Witherspoon turned down the role of Sydney Prescott. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elizabeth Berkeley. Do you do you remember Elizabeth Berkeley? Elizabeth is. Remind me. Showgirls. It's from, is she? Say by the bell. Sa yeah. Yes. So she auditioned for the role of Gail. It was, she uh, did? yeah. And was immediately turned down because of the backlash for Showgirls. Why do people movie. give her so much backlash for Showgirls? I guess it was like, you, you, you were just on Say by the bell and now you're like, your yams True. out. She was just trying to, she was trying to. And the like, movie was bad. Yeah. But also, I mean. But you know what? There's a sex scene in the pool that does not work. I know. I know the sex scene. It's, you know, it's one of those scenes where everybody's like, look at this. I couldn't rewind it. Like, usually <laughs> I'll like, all right, let me, let nah, me see I'm it again. <laughs> I'm good with that. We're just going to skip past that scene. Brooke Shields was nearly cast as Gail Weathers after Janine Garofalo turned down this role. That is a very 90 sentence I just said. That is Brooke Shields? Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Let's got a few more things in here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> that's stupid what is it um so filming took over a course of eight weeks um Stu's house um which was the location for the entire third act because <laughs> we for you forget that's his house right the 42 minutes that's Stu's oh, house yeah so i was like oh that is Stu's house you just feel like it's some random house that I they're know. at it's like no this is Stu's house you're in the, the one of the killers layer yep um, is a house on Tamales um, Road east of Tamales Bay and it only recently become available after the death of the owners. So people died. They said, you know, we'll buy this house real quick. Yeah, let me it's buy a death this. House. <laughs> um, that house is cursed. Yes. Do, 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 do. Uh, 
So um, early into production, Weinstein's were unconvinced that Wes Craven was making the film scary enough. Craven and his editor, Patrick Lussier, um, quickly assembled a work print of the opening 13 minutes. So the Drew Barrymore scene. Right. Um, and to get to assuage any doubts. OK. So, yeah, well, you think it's scary? You think it's not scary? Here, look at that. Look at her guts. There you go. Look at his guts. She's hanging from a tree. Yeah. And I feel like it made it scary because she's just minding her business. She's doing what every average person is doing, talking on the phone, yeah. making her popcorn. About to watch a scary movie. Somebody random calls her. Yeah. She's dead. All right. Um, <laughs> also, with what we learned earlier about the white suit and her being hung from that tree, would not have worked. Oh. Would not have worked. Oh, no. <clears throat> would not have worked. See, yep. They made a wise choice. Um, they made a very wise choice because, honestly, that would have been really terrible. Uh, true, Drew, two Drew Barrymore notes. I don't like feet. I'm, I'm going to tell you this now. I hate feet. Okay. Um, so she shot all her scenes barefoot, and uh, she's wearing a wig in the opening sequence. Yes. <laughs> uh, the barefoot bit that is not a fan. funny. Not a fan of feet. <laughs> The script, so the script for the movie went on sale on Friday. On a Friday, by Monday, it was the subject of a fierce bidding war. <laughs> you know, people was like, "Look, I need that. <laughs> let, me, let me get that off." Now they were sleeping, and now they wanted all this. I know. Okay. For the penetrating effect of, of the knives, uh, production used collapsible blades to prevent injury. Nice. Um, <laughs> we love that. <laughs> they, uh, one person didn't. Skeet didn't. <gasps> Yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, Psychopath. Uh, Seth auditioned for the role of Randy Meeks. Randy. I forget who Randy is. S- wait, Seth Green. Yeah. Okay, Randy Meeks. Wasn't I, he just like... I think he was a one-off person, right? Just some... Yeah, just like some random like friend or buddy or something. Yeah. I, I don't even think he had like a... He wanted a smaller but, role and he yeah. got a bigger role, which probably really is why we know who Seth Green is. With that and... That's a... And... He was in Austin Powers. And you look at that arc, like you go from this mm-hmm. to like Austin Powers and then kind of back to that and back to Austin yep. Powers. It's like you're just hanging around the late 90s. He is. Yep. So there's two interesting cameos in it. No, one one really interesting cameo in it. Um, <laughs> so at the 39 minute mark, um, Linda Blair pop, props up from The Exorcist. You, hold on. She was one of the reporters. And she was like, people want to know what um, and they and they have a right to know. That was, that was fucking Linda Blair. See, I am ve- I guess I'm really oblivious sometimes when I'm watching movies because I did not pick that up. And I've seen I told you I've seen this movie so many times. Uh-huh. I'm just now finding out. But this now Linda Blair. with this, you're going to end up going back like, hold on. <laughs> OK, yeah. I need to figure out where the fuck she was. I didn't even know she was in this. Because she's wearing like a terrible blue suit. and It looks like she has like an afro. And that's <laughs> Linda Blair. Yeah. Linda had so this will also be this will also be about twenty three years yeah. after her being like in The Exorcist. Uh, I wonder why she had even had like a cat. Like why? I think they were trying to get her back. She had some um, issues. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. And some old um, glizzy issues, as it were. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Poor yeah. Linda. I hate to see it. Uh, when the phone slips out of Billy's hand um, and it hits Stu in the head, it yes. was completely unintentional. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wes Craven kept it in there. It's like, oh, yeah, that's great. That's a good reaction. Keep it. It's I like, mean, it's natural. I got a concussion, you <laughs> fuck. Um, at the one minute and 40, uh, at, the, at the one hour and 40 minute mark, Sydney comes out of the closet and stabs Billy with an umbrella. The stunt man was, the, the stunt man was supposed to hit a, um, a pad on Skeet's chest. Yeah. The first hit the pad, the second slipped and hit him in the chest. And, oh. um, Ulrich has a metal wiring beneath his skin because he had open, open heart surgery as a child, which caused him an intense pain, and and he had to have pressure applied to it to kind of re- get his get a situation well, set. Well, damn. He's like, I don't like these. Not don't make be careful where you stab me. Oh my god. See, you know what? Ooh. Drew be now, me. now this is this one is going to be for you right yes, here. Yes, please. Drew Barrymore was initially cast as Sydney. Uh huh. Really? So then what? What like changed? Like, she insisted that she play Cassie instead, and um, it, so it would make the audience think anything could happen because she gets killed off. She's the star. She yeah, gets killed off in the first. Drew like, Barrymore. What the fuck is this? Where? I thought this was a Drew Barrymore movie. Who's this? Nev Campbell what? bitch. <laughs> Just, that's a that's a good thought process mm-hmm. because I mean, like like you said, she's obviously a star. Yeah. But I kind now that you said that I kind of like that she did not take Sydney's role yeah. and is just played for that like what do you say twelve minutes? Yeah. 
That's very interesting. When the killer smashes um, his head through the window and Casey hits him in the face with the phone, director Wes Craven is actually wearing the costume and she, and he really got hit in the face. That's fine. He's like, ah. He's like, I'm, I'm all part of this movie. <laughs> no, what happened? I do my own stuff. <laughs> what happened was, that's why he fired everyone. He's like, yeah, I gotta reshoot that. Yeah, you okay. assholes. <laughs> fired the whole crew. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta bust my head through the window again? No. Oh man, uh, that's no. I'm I'm wrong. Yeah, he, yeah. It, it, going back and thinking about it, Jamie Kennedy is the one that's doing all the trivia. I don't know why I'm keep thinking of Seth Green. Yeah, Seth Green is barely in the movie. I do that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Seth Green had a small like he was just some rando, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm, but they so, kind of look similar, so I can see where you're going with that. They kind of yeah, small, similar energy yeah. too. Uh. <laughs> The death of, uh, of uh, Principal Hembry, that's a bad name too, mm -hmm. um, was added to the film after um, Bob Weinstein noticed that for about 30 pages, which pretty much a page is about a minute, so about a half an hour, no one dies. Nothing happens. And Kevin Williams, and he told Kevin Williamson, somebody's got to die. So this is why his character was killed. Somebody has to die. Okay. Because <laughs> they were saving everything for the climax. Yes. Uh, let's see. Ooh, would you, do you think though? Do you think had nobody been killed, it would have been better? Or like, do you feel like it was necessary to just have somebody killed? What is it like every? They set it. Minutes? They set it up. You had two deaths in the first ten minutes, fifteen yeah, minutes, exactly. What have you. And then um, you have kind of like this stalkery kind of "I'm coming for you" kind of kind yeah. of vibe. Um, it, it felt wedged in. To have him killed that way. Exactly, yeah. Um, but it, you did have that nice visual joke with the janitor looking like Freddy Krueger, which was kind of great. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I can see that, yeah. Um, Matthew Lillard ad lib ad lib the line, Houston, we have a problem, when he discovered the gun was gone, <laughs> which is great, by the <laughs> that way. That is great, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, this is funny. So, when Tatum um, dies in the garage. Oh, yeah. The, she had she had bruises all over her torso because she was stuck in there for several hours thing, in the pet door. Yes. Yeah. Could you fit in a pet door? No. <laughs> I don't feel it. Like, like, it's super small. Uh, <laughs> so, Kevin Patrick Walls, who plays uh, Drew Barrymore's ill-fated boyfriend, was given a small part as compensation because he, he wanted the role for Billy. And they were like, nah, you don't have Johnny Depp hair, so sorry. Uh, sorry, you, you're not a heartthrob. Goodbye. You get to have your guts all over the, the fridge. You know what? <laughs> we can do you one better. You're not going to be the heartthrob of the movie. You're just going to die. <laughs> so Dewey was supposed to die. Okay. Um, and just in, and he was going to be taken to the hospital, and just in case they changed him, I was like, well, maybe he does die. Maybe he doesn't. I was like, when he stumbled out of there with a the knife in his back, I was like, you can't kill him. Not like that. He's indestructible, yeah. Not with that terrible mustache. So at a uh -oh. convention, Ski Ulrich admitted that Billy is the one who killed um, Tatum. Okay. So just for that ad, it's like, yeah, so who killed who in it? Because yeah. you want to do the body count. You want to know who kills who. I need to know the body count. Well, let's see. Um, so this, is, this might be right, to your point. Rose McGowan was so small that she couldn't actually stay in the pet door. They had to tape her in there are you serious <laughs> she kept falling out oh she is very small so the, damn like that's uncomfortable first off to even be in that situation and then now you have to be taped how many takes did that take? <laughs> just like, how many takes it's like she fell out again god damn it um god damn, somebody tape her up where's the glue um, glue her in the door so here's here so let's let's shift into some observations we, yes. we had a fair amount of trivia I feel like you, yes. do you feel like you've gotten something out of that i feel like i actually learned a lot that i did not even know or realize so yes i'm happy with that <laughs> that's a mic punch <laughs> mic punch sorry <laughs> no you, um so i'm gonna give you my observations and then so i'm gonna put you on the spot right here all right what sorry, sorry i don't tell you uh let's do it we're gonna we're gonna go over our favorite lines too. Okay, I'm gonna try my favorite lines. I, okay. I have a terrible, terrible memory. Well, um, just coordinated. <laughs> right. I'll make up some lines. Well, then you might be the killer. How can we do that? Uh, so observations I have. Um, has there been a movie? This is literally what I wrote. Has there been a movie where like a star, major star, dies at the beginning like this? What movie comes to mind? Like you get somebody and then they're really just not in the movie. I can't think of any from that time period. Yeah. Now they probably do it more. I feel like I've seen movies where they've taken a star and they're just gone just for that cameo yeah. appearance. Yeah. I don't feel like 
before. I can't think off the top of my head where there's like a big yeah. actor or actress that's killed off immediately. At and, the and beginning. That's a, except for like in the, in the sequel where Jada Pinkett dies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like before then, I mean, this is the only one that comes to mind. I'm proud. I might be wrong. No, I think you're right though. Like this is a major one too. But, like, yeah. Like honestly, it grabs your attention. So definitely. And for the audience that you have too, because when you look at the tiles for it, you see her screaming. You don't see Nev Campbell initially. No. You, you, you see her and you see the mask and all of that. Um, second observation. This is a third act movie to me. Okay. When we get to the house and at that last 42 minutes, that's where all of the kind of, with the exception of that intro scene, yeah. that's where most of the iconic shit happens. It is. It is most of the movie. Yeah. I mean, there is a dude on a truck and he's bleeding all over the truck and this guy's dead. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> This is. The, I, I'm going to say it again because okay. you caused me to say it early, so I'm blaming you. No, if, what is it? I just wish Ski Aldrich was a bigger star, so we could say skeet, skeet, skeet in the headline. Yeah, I think we should petition Come, coming for that. Soon. Coming soon, skeet, 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 skeet. Um, this is a question I have, and I want your take on it. Okay. Was Stu in love with Billy? St was Stu in love with Billy? I don't think so. Uh, what made you? Is this something you This is a feel? thought I had, yeah. This is what I felt. So wait, why do you feel like Stu do you, Stu's secretly in love with Billy? Mm -hmm. I, I think so I think know. Billy was the killer because he wasn't getting any sex or whatever yeah, in, in, in the wasn't. story. But I feel like Stu was just going along to appease Billy. He's like, Well, Billy wants this. And it didn't feel like it was peer pressure. He's like, I want to make Billy happy. I kinda, so stab me, please. I can see that. Yeah. But I don't know if it was like like a um, like a love attraction thing. You might you might be it's the Johnny right. Depp hair though. Johnny Depp hair will pull you vibe. Up. Okay, yeah. I don't know. I feel like maybe it was like, yeah, he wanted to appease him. He wanted to do like whatever he said. Yeah. But I don't know if it was like it might have just been like the alpha thing. Or maybe he just was like looked up to him so much, like wanted to be him, yeah, yeah. him that he was just going along say, to try to be like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I all I'll say is this: he, I'm going to still positive he loved him. He loved him <laughs> so much that he chose to become Shaggy. He chose to solve murders and crimes instead of committing them. <laughs> it's like when you go through a bad breakup, you're like, you know what? I don't watch True Blood anymore. I watch something different. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's a good, it's a good observation. Uh, I'm not going to write it off because uh -huh. like, if I think about it more, like I can see that it going that way. I mean, you didn't see the director's cut when you give them a wild bloge in the bathroom. Yeah. You, you, I'll see you the director's cut. It's a Please wild bloge happening. Yeah. Send me the director's cut. Say I'm not bloge the more. <laughs> bloge. It's like a European bloge. blowjob. Um, no, please. I wrote down, it's a very white movie. <laughs> I don't see one black person in this like, There's not. Woodsboro, they do not come there. Wait. Who's that basketball team? Yeah. No. I don't see any. That's a good point. It's only white people. Yeah. Um, they could have made the cameraman like a black dude or what have you, but then he's getting marked off. So They could have They could have put plenty of black people in this film. Yeah. Um, but I guess they chose all white people. Mid-90s. Um, exactly. Let's see. Hmm. Did the pre-credit scene, so it's that little scene right before the credits start rolling at the end of the movie, did that foretell of sequels? Because I don't know if movies knew they were getting sequels, so... Okay, I'm thinking... So, at this point, we've seen Billy and Stu, they're, they're murked off, they're dead. Yep, yep. And you have the, sometimes the killer get blammed, that whole thing, mm -hmm. right? But then when they go to Black and they have all of the, everything is over, and you see, ah! Yeah. Was that to, was that a foretelling of like we're getting a sequel? We're definitely getting a sequel because you've killed the killers. I feel like maybe. Okay. Probably I don't know. You just ever watch a movie and like you don't need that closure to tell you that there's probably going to be a sequel. Like you just kind of are watching and you're like, I just feel like they're going to make another one. Yeah, that. Do you ever feel that? That's my dad all the time. Okay. Usually I see movies after they've come out and it's like, I. So the second one already came out. Let me just watch the first one. So okay. I don't I don't have that same. Got you. I'll put it this way. You know how, like, Ghostbusters, because that's what guys like. Ghostbusters. Uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters, yes. Look, let me live. Uh, <laughs> Ghostface, Ghostbusters, it's all the same. It's fine. Uh, they're, they're white dudes, too. Um, no. There's one black guy in it. Um, I saw Ghostbusters 2 before I saw the first one. 
Really? Yeah. So you do you watch? So you watch second the sequels before you watch the first. It one? just happened that that was the case. Like okay. the first Ghostbusters came out a year before I was born. Yes, I dated myself. Say I'm fifty or whatever. I don't care. Uh, but the second one I came out. <laughs> the second one came out. Um, I just I, I was four, and I was okay. like, so it was like I was already alive and around. It's like, oh, this is the one with Bobby Brown in it. This is the black yeah. one. <laughs> you want to watch that one? Go and then ahead. I was like, oh. And then rewatching the first one not too long ago with, with my girl, and she was like, eh, the first one's a better movie. I was like, you're saying that because you were fucking around, man. Mm. And she was like, yeah, the second one's a little derivative. I was like, hey, man, fuck you, man. <laughs> you were like, I'm sitting by the second one. I you're don't right. care. Uh, let's see. Now, this is a question for you. Um, where, so excluding the this one, because we know this one's the most successful. Yeah, yeah. Where do you rank the other four properties? So the three sequels and the series, where do you rank them? What's your first and what's your last? Honestly, probably in order, just in the just order they it. are. Really? Yeah. Because, okay, if you, the fourth one, obviously was a flop and I did see it in theaters um, and I keep getting three like for some reason three's not coming to me three had Jay and Silent Bob pop up in it at one point and what year do you remember what that year was that was out 2000 second one came out in 97 and it was a long gap bef- I think the fourth one was 2011 maybe the fourth one yeah was like 2012 yeah okay so for some reason my mind goes scream one Two, three, I don't remember three. Yeah. And then four. I don't really remember three. I, w- which one had like Le- Leah Shriver in it? Like he was like hot and weary actually pops up. It's The mythos starts to get a little murky after that second Do movie. You see, yeah, after the second, I'm like, I don't remember the third one. So what, what are your thoughts on the series then? The se- I haven't watched the series. The, or the one that's been out, I yeah. have not touched that one. There is... You could have been cast in it. They, they cast somebody with your archetype in it. You should look it up. See, my sister was like, okay, watch the Scream series, watch the Scream series. And I was like, I don't know how I feel about watching it. I'm that type of person where I'm like, I'm not going to watch it. I'm a purist. <laughs> but then I usually break and then just go ahead and watch it. Yeah. I just haven't. I just haven't been like That was me with Clarice. Me. That was me with Clarice. Really? Yes. Okay. I hate watch it. And it's, it's things, we'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. There's things in there that don't quite work. No? No. Okay. Uh, but, you know, my I share a birthday with Hannibal Lecter. We have the same birthday. Yeah, that's important. Very. Yeah. So the when, Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, when I run into re- rude people, they're yeah. on my plate. Yeah. And I've been eating well. No. Uh, You've been eating everyone. <laughs> uh, now, here's the other question I got for you. Yeah, what's up? Who's the biggest winner in this movie in terms of career? And here's your options. Okay, give me the options. Wes Craven, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, or David Arquette. Who's your biggest winner? I'm thinking of the like tra- tra- trajectory of their careers. Like Nev Campbell, she's pretty popping. So she had obviously before the crafts, uh, Wild Things. I, I I enjoy Wild Things. Wild Things was great. Okay, yeah. Wild Things one and two right is two she might have been in two she, was she in two it gets a little murky though for With, her yeah it gets a little murky for her so it's kind of i feel like she kind of died down like after she played she's played sydney four yeah. times she may have made a cameo in the series exactly and then i mean Wes craven he's dead <laughs> yeah and then uh who do we have you said david arquette yeah David Arquette, I mean, what did he do after that? He did that. He did the wrestling movie. He, he had a wrestling championship. He's WCW champion. Yeah. And, wh- and he became a wrestler. Legitimately. What David Arquette? Mm-hmm. He felt so bad about what happened with WCW that he trained to actually be a wrestler. He did death matches and all types of wild shit. Okay. Because I'm like, the movie he was in, um, the wrestling Ready movie? to Rumble? Ready. Ass. I, I, really? No, it's like one of those guilty pleasure movies where you're like, I know this movie is terrible, but I'm going to keep watching it. I'm listening. Yeah, I just kept watching it for some reason. And I think, you know, Diamond Dallas Page was in it. And I'm like, whoa, let's little, go. Little like, soap high five. Yeah. <laughs> I was hyped about it. Suing Rockefeller. Yeah. <laughs> I I was down for it, okay? I, I think from, from the movie... Um, I think Courtney Cox, the, the movie thing didn't really happen for her. No. Um, you know, this is going to date me a little bit, but she was in, she was, uh, so 
she was in Masters of the Universe, one of her one of the earliest movies. It was like 1986. She was okay. in it's us, He Man, and there it's it's wild. Um, and then she did Friends, and yes. she tried to do this to go back to movies, and it didn't quite work. I know. Actually, Jennifer Aniston has had a better movie career than her. She has. Um, and yeah, she started she off meagerly has. too with the Leprechaun yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, I think it's either Wes Craven or it might be Wes Craven because this kind of brought him back, I think. Honestly, I feel like out of everyone, because it's not like their like, careers like were flops, but I'm like, you kind of just didn't. You were ser- they were you serviceable. You didn't hear from them. You didn't see them as many roles. Like, it was kind of like. And with all of these, like, put it this way. With all of the series that pop up now, right? There's yeah. so much TV. There Aren't is any of them currently on a series? No, none. Now, uh, Courtney Cox had Cougar Town at one point. Yeah, but like, how successful? Was that? I think it was on for like five seasons or something. Oh, okay. but again, I'm not checking but for. But nobody's it. keeping up with that shit. No. Her face fell off doing a reunion special. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's just dry. I'm sitting here like, wait a second, hold <laughs> it's on. Dry, dry hair, pull. white people face falling off. <laughs> I'm like, pull up that clip right now because I would love to see somebody's face fall off. <laughs> now, all right. So <laughs> here are my favorite scenes. And we can just throw those in there, like, and, and throw yours okay. in as well as we go through. And this will be the last segment we have. See? You almost cool. I'm, I enjoyed this. You almost finished your first MLB game. I was not nervous. I'm comfortable. Oh, no. I it's going to get bad now. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm the unflappable live. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> so, I, and, and, and like I said, work yours in as well. Um, I think, so my first scene, I think we start off strong. Yeah. The intro is a great extended, like, scene. Yes? I told you not to hang up on me. What do you want? To talk. Well, dial someone else, okay? It works. It establishes the universe that we're in. um, And you don't know what's going to happen. That's what I like most about it. Yeah. And um, and as I look at it, I don't know wigs well. And I was like, oh, that's a bad wig. Now now I see it as an adult. Now you see it. Now you see it, you're like, well, damn, they set her up. Now I can't unsee it. It's like, he should have strangled you with that wig. Yeah, great. Like, they, should just, shit they should have ripped the wig off of you first, then killed you. Wow, that's very specific. <laughs> uh, another scene that I like um, is a little further down, and this is terrible. I'm, okay. reali- I'm realizing how terrible oh, this no. is. It was like the first I'm, two scenes, I'm, I'm like, curious. Why is it terrible? Why? <laughs> just white women getting murked off. Next one is Rose McGowan's death in the freaking garage. Lose the outfit. If Sydney sees it, she'll flip. Oh, you want to play psycho killer? Can I be the helpless victim? Okay, let's see. No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. I want to be in the sequel. Cut, Casper. That's a wrap. That was a good death. And yeah. that might sound messed up, but like... Because she was trolling him. What you want to do? <laughs> I was like, yeah. like, why are you back here? Yeah. I feel like that's a good death, though. No, it, it was. It, it was unique. Um, and it definitely hit on some of those things I look for in the 80s. Of like, oh, let me use this implement in the home to kill this See, person. too. And that just makes it more like, I guess, like for the viewer, more like scary because it's like, okay, they're using anything in this person's home. Yeah. Like you can die anyway in your house. Mm-hmm. It's like, here's the carbon more, monoxide. It makes it more like, like scary. Like, yeah. And it's this infiltration thing because this is at the house. So it's exactly. not like, you know, and... You almost forget. And you're like, hold on, what? I definitely like forgot that. Yeah, I'm like, I just thought they were just random house, random, random party, random house, random everything. Um, another another scene that I like uh, would be just the roles being put out there. What the horror movie roles are. That works. Okay. Jesus Christ! You don't know the rules. Uh, have an aneurysm, why don't you? There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. For instance. Number one, you can never have sex. (laughs) Big no no, big no. Um, and penultimately, is that's not a word. Uh, the Billy and Stu reveal. Corn syrup, same stuff they use for pigs' blood and carry. (laughs) Surprise, Sydney. That that reveal, um, yes. just what they're doing and all of that 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 works for me. That whole kitchen thing, um, and the the stabbing thing is really ridiculous. The stabbing, yeah, they just this was a teenager plan. Yeah, it's like you could do this differently. Mm-hmm. 
you're white, you're going to get off. It's fine. Just fucking, God damn it. You didn't need to stab each other. <laughs> Which I think, it, going back to my gay subplot. Oh, oh, the love. Oh, yeah. That's what the stabbing was. I mean, guess I guess because you could say it's like um, you know. passion, a crime of passion. Well. Right? They were trading. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, you're 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 bottoming today. I'm never mind. Um, they might they though they might have had something secretly. I I I don't know. Just that it, it's really funny because I'm laughing so much at Stu. And I was like, you coming too deep? <laughs> just like, can you stop? I know. I feel. What is that like a metaphor? Like you cut me too deep with your love? I don't know. Oh my god. I feel like it could be. Now that you're saying this, my head is like filtered with just like this love. Take 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 that line from what Brokeback Mountain. I just can't quit you. <laughs> it's kind of like that. I just can't cut you. I recently watched Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> I've like never seen ago. it. I've never seen it. Uh, it was just like, yeah. I wonder what the. It, it, it was it, intense. What was that that thing from? I think it was Family Guy. It was like I'm doing a remake of Brokeback Mountain for the horse's perspective. <laughs> Not the horse. <laughs> so I was like, that's funny. The gay horse. Um, lastly. Um, the the uh, the post the post shooting, um, I think like kind of we're we're all good, but are we? That everything is done, but then you see just ghost face come out, and you're like, is there a different color? Yeah. Is, is that a continuation? What are we doing here? And it's a quick like thing, and I think that just like works, just the way that whole thing kind of it sets up for a sequel. You're looking for it, but it gets over that. This is the new horror icon that we're trying to create here. Yeah, I like that too. I think that that's true. Like, that was the new the new horror icon. Mm-hmm. So, do you have anything you want to throw in there, or? Uh, and that's that's pretty much all the scenes I have. I just want to say that sometimes, like, just from watching scary movie and Scream, sometimes I get them mixed up in my head because i'm always thinking of just like funny bits from like scary movie like for example dewey in scary movie was <laughs> did he keep his name dewey Stop. was I, it dewey or wasn't it like they would call him like doofus or yes, something but just like i always never can take dewey seriously are you waiting for a freestyle and- i'm just always <laughs> thinking like that dirty Dewey, who was putting his thing in the vacuum and scary movie, is going to pop up. So those characters for me always get Stop. like intertwined. Stop it! <laughs> now we're going to have to do a damn book review. You're going to be on for a review for scary movie now. <laughs> Please put me on. <laughs> it's like, man, put your dick away, man. Yeah, I'm like, why did they make? <laughs> it's such a ridiculous thing. Oh god, that's yeah, gross. <laughs> a mess. Well, I mean, that's... Um, yeah, I get those movies mixed up sometimes because... <laughs> it was Dookie. <laughs> it was Dookie? <laughs> I was like, I know it wasn't oh, Dookie. It was like no. Doofus. His name was Dookie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not right. That's yeah, really pull it bad. Up because I'm, I'm I, looking at it right now. It's not good. Like, no, sorry. You're right. Yeah, it was Doofy. It was Doofy. Doofy. Yeah. Yes, Doofy. I knew it was something. <laughs> he always had the dookie stains though because he would touch yeah. his butt <laughs> this is so, this is such a problematic movie well yeah because now you if that movie will come out you can't do this you can't no. do that now it's um, a lot of things that can't happen but I love that I think he was a great character in scary movie <laughs> I think it was representation uh, <laughs> I yeah I think it was accurate someone existed uh, it was definitely accurate so any final thoughts on um Shri- no thoughts on the on the script on the movie on the movie as a whole yeah as we wrap up here um classic movie obviously wow. everybody knows you were two when this movie came out yeah but i watched it later see i have older sisters i'm listening so everything that was like before me uh-huh. my sister would just catch me up on gotcha sisters you know what i mean like if it was obviously i was two years old so i did not go to the movie theater and watch this movie i mean i was the oldest so okay i had to be the person catching people there up. you go so my sister we had all the vhs's and then we would just watch them yeah all of them so i know scream was one that we would watch a lot together mm-hmm. um and i loved it i feel like iconic everybody knows everybody knows scream if you haven't seen scream what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Um, yeah. I felt like it gave like a new, fresh, I guess, like what, it, like genre, I guess, would it be? It, it tried to, in my opinion, I think it tried to 
it was the last guess of the slasher genre. Yeah, definitely slasher, of course. But yeah, I feel like that's one of those movies that if even if I'm not paying full attention to it, I can have it on in the background. Like I may right now not be able to think of like a quote off the top of my mm-hmm. head. But if the movie's playing, I'll be like, oh, my God, I remember this scene. X, Y and Z happened. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That, that's that's your, your thoughts, your notes, all of that? Yeah. I mean, that's all I have. Oh, well, well thank Unless you. Unless you have any questions for me. About- <laughs> so Great. who's the next person you're killing? So, the next person I'm killing yeah. is going to be you. <laughs> uh, so there you have it. Uh, there may be a new episode yeah. next year. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so, Liv, thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. Um, where can he find you? Want to, where can he find you? They want to check you out on social media and see social more of your media, stuff. Um, most importantly, you're going to want to follow NXPA. Go on Instagram, follow NXPA Media, um, and go ahead and check us out. My personal is underscore Liverace, and that's L I V E R A C E. Yeah. Uh, so there you have it, folks. Um, I'm Rob Lee uh, for Live. This has been Let's Watch It Again. Scream 25th anniversary. Uh, keep keep watching those movies. Yes, sir. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs>